ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Debanjan Chakraborty. I'm the director of the British Council here in East and Northeast India. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the Victoria Memorial to an evening of sheer magic among the marble and with the moon. Our work in East India has lots and lots of variety, and I think what we are about to witness today with the moon, the marble, and the music is one dimension of the fantastic work we have been doing across uh, the space in culture and education, and my colleagues uh, will talk about it in a little while. Uh, I have a couple of quick housekeeping announcements to make. Uh, the washrooms are, there are a couple of toilets towards the back there. Um, and uh, please be very sensitive when you use uh, the mobile phone. It is a uh, public uh, work of art, and therefore it's meant to be photographed, selfies and wifeys and wifeys. But uh, during the performance, please uh, desist as much as possible from obstructing other people's line of view. Um, without further ado, may I invite Dr. Jointo Shengupto, director and curator of Victoria Memorial Museum and Hall, without whose support this evening wouldn't have been possible. <coughs> uh, Dr. Devi Prashad Duari, the director of the MP Birla Planetarium and the guest of honor for tonight's inaugural, uh, the exhibition inauguration. Uh, the <coughs> director of British Council, the All India Director of British Council, Mr. Alan Gemmel. Uh, Dr. Devanjan Chakraborty, the Director of British Council in East and Northeast India. Uh, the Honorable Consul General of the United States in Kolkata, Mr. Craig Hall. Uh, other fellow directors of other museums, uh, distinguished members of the audience, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and a very warm welcome to the inauguration of this fascinating art installation exhibition, the Museum of the Moon, which it's a privilege and honor for the Victoria Memorial Hall to bring to you in collaboration with the British Council. And as you can see for yourselves, it is unlike anything that we have done so far. Uh, the original plan was to have the moon uh, during the super blue blood moon about two weeks ago, uh, but that plan didn't materialize, so we decided to have the moon here during the new moon season, when the real moon is just a sliver in the sky. I cannot even see it from here. Uh, and <coughs> we have decided to place it in front of the throne statue of Queen Victoria, which you can see in the background. Uh, Queen Victoria, who once ruled over an empire in which the sun never set. But this is the post-imperial age. So we decided to have the moon gently descend upon the queen. And I'm very grateful that my co-host for tonight, Alan and Devanyan from the British Council, have taken to this new symbolism very sportingly and gracefully. <laughs> So um, here we are, it's a, it's a fascinating art installation which is on a world tour uh, created by the critically acclaimed British artist Luke Jerome, who cannot be here uh, to, tonight. Uh, but we, we are celebrating the moon. We are deeply grateful to Dr. Dwari for readily agreeing to grace this occasion and introduce the moon uh, before you. So although the moon has descended from the sky and it is currently doing a world tour around planet Earth to find the best speaker to present the moon to you, we just had to cross the road from Victoria Memorial Hall and go to the Birla Planetarium. So that's all I have to say for now. Uh, thank you so much. Enjoy the moon, enjoy the concert, celebrate the moon and over these two days and please don't get moonstruck. Thank you very much. May I invite my colleague, uh, Alan Gemmel, Director, British Council India and Minister Cultural Affairs, British High Commission, to come up and say a few words. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, Dr. Sengupta, colleagues from the Victoria Memorial, 
uh, honored guests, dignitaries, friends. Uh, we are delighted that you are joining us as we launch and land uh, the moon in, in Kolkata. It felt absolutely appropriate to us that we would bring this uh, lunar spectacle to the home of Tagore. Uh, and on my way here, I was reading uh, one of his uh, collections, The Crescent Moon, a, a series about for children, where he, I think, excites and inspires and reminds us of the wonder of childhood. And in The Astronomer, uh, a child asks her father, if the moon got caught in the tree, could we catch it? So I am pleased that we together tonight uh, have him in mind and that story in mind because we have caught it. And I hope that we've created together something very special that we'll remember for a very long time. The moon is here to mark the last phase of the uh, UK India Year of Culture, which we've been taking round the country, a year in which we've tried to do three things. We've tried to celebrate the modern day relationship between our countries. We've tried to connect with young people, uh, in particular all over India, uh, uh, and connect them with young people in the UK. And we've tried to inspire them to build a relationship for the next 70 years. And I hope that tonight we do a little bit of that together. But the moon also marks the first phase in a year-long campaign that marks 70 years of the British Council in India. So my organization is 70 years old this year, and, and we want to celebrate that. In those 70 years, we have been inspired by India every day. We've been inspired by its young people, its artists, its scientists, its museum directors. And we are taking that inspiration through all of our programming this year. So we hope that you will join us in our Inspired by India campaign. But most importantly tonight, I hope that you will enjoy this wonderful spectacle and take lots of selfies and hashtag Museum of the Moon and share the best lunar landing that we could make together. Thank you so much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much, Alan. Um, it's my great pleasure now to welcome on stage Dr. Devi Prashad Duari, director of Birla Planetarium, but also one of the most inspiring and engaging science communicators we have grown up with. Uh, as he comes up on stage, may I just remind everyone in the audience and those who have not been able to come in that this will be open till 9 o'clock tonight and also tomorrow evening. So please don't get impatient. There will be opportunity to come up close and have a closer look at this wonderful installation. Dr. Devi Prashad Duari to introduce the moon and inaugurate this fantastic installation. A very good evening to you all. We all know Calcutta is uh, well known as a city of culture. But in the present era, science has become a part of our culture. So I think today is the mixing of culture and science, both at the grounds of Victoria Memorial. And what a place, because Calcutta means Victoria Memorial, apart from Howrah Bridge. So I think it's a wonderful evening. It's a magical evening that we are here today. But one has to also consider why moon? Because thousands of years back, when our ancestors first became conscious about the sky, about the heavens, about the heavenly bodies, their motions, they were fascinated by the moon. Lot of stories, lot of mythological stories, lot of ideas, lot of concepts came out from the early Greek, Roman, and other philosophers about the moon. But it's amazing that all of them realize that it plays a tremendously important role to Earth without understanding the scientific connection. And to make the long story short, moon is there in the sky. That is the reason we are here on the Earth. Not many of us understand or realize that our very basic existence on Earth, our origin and evolution of life on Earth happened 
because probably moon was one of the biggest factor. What is moon? The present scientists believe, at least 90% of the scientists believe, moon was born from our earth. 4.52 billion years back, a huge rock came and slammed onto the earth with such a force, huge amount of the surface material got gouged up and was thrown up into space. But because of Earth's attraction, they could not go away forever, but going to a very vast distance, they condensed, coagulated, coalesced, and has given birth to our moon. So, moon was born from the Earth. But what happened because of that collision? Two things happened. Forever, Earth's spinning axis got tilted by 23 and a half degrees, and the Pacific Ocean was created. And this tilting of 23 and a half degrees is responsible for the change of seasons. Because sunlight falling directly onto a patch of land and falling slantingly over a bigger patch of land, in the first case, the temperature becomes more than the second. And because of the tilt of the earth, for six months, roughly six months, sun falls directly onto the northern hemisphere and slantingly onto the south, making summer in the north and winter in the south. And later six months, the opposite. You can again ask me, okay, I understand because of the tilt, season changes occur, but why it is so important? Do you know if there were no change of seasons, what would have happened to Earth? If there were no change of seasons, there would have been no ocean currents in our oceans. If there are no ocean currents in our oceans, there would have been no air currents in our atmosphere. And if there are no air currents in our atmosphere, clouds would not have born somewhere and gathered somewhere else and gave us rain and fresh water. Life would not have been possible because just after Earth was born, it would have been a barren desert. So you and me exist is because change of seasons. And change of seasons happened indirectly because of the birth of the moon. Not only that, we all know tides. It is because of the differential attraction of the moon on both sides of the Earth's water body, tides occur. And we take it for granted because we are a coastal area people. We have rivers, Ganges, and we know tides twice a day. But do you know how important this is? Because in our childhood days, we have all learned first life form evolved on Earth on oceans. So how did it come onto the land? It suddenly grew legs? No. Every high tide, multicellular organisms used to come washed ashore. Water used to go down, they used to get stranded and get killed. But over millions of years, they got the adaptation, the power to stay alive on land and from their different animals happened, different organisms happened, monkeys happened and from monkeys we have arrived. So that we are here is because tides are there and tides are caused by this object. So moon plays a tremendously important role in the origin, evolution, and presently also for the sustenance of life forms on Earth. But moon also is very interesting. How many of us know every year, every year, moon is going away from Earth 3.6 centimeters on an average. That means millions of years back, one day of Earth was not 24 hours. It was six hours to seven hours. And millions of years later, Earth will be making its one day in 48 hours. Because as moon is going away, Earth is slowing down. So, though we can think moon as a thing of beauty, the pearly white light, and a lot of people can write poetries, that's fine. But for our existence, moon is there and is a very, very important factor. And that is the re reason probably this timely exhibition of the moon, especially in India and especially in Kolkata, is very relevant. Why? One factor I think the director mentioned about the blue, super blue blood moon that happened on 31st January. And another factor, just yesterday we came to know, month of April, India is going to send its second moon mission, Chandrajaan 2. So, we are actually at the cusp, at the junction of two very important events. Science is a global phenomena. It's a collaborative effort nowadays. Why am I putting special emphasis on India? Because my friend, it was 2008, India's first moon mission, Chandrajaan 1, that we came to know definitively that there is presence of water ice on the moon by the uh, instrument called Moon Mineralogy Mapper. And after that, NASA scientists have also found it later, a lot of water. Why that is important? Because 
scientists of the world are realizing that our natural resources are becoming so less day by day and the population is growing, soon we have to find habitable places in the space. And moon can be one of the best options. And if you have water eyes, which can be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen, that oxygen can create a biosphere for which the humans and the plants can survive and the hydrogen can be used as a rocket fuel. So, moon is now very seriously looked upon as the next frontier of human endeavor in understanding the cosmos. Not only that, they have found traces of minerals, calcium, magnesium, aluminum, and most of it, helium-3. Helium-3 is a magic thing. You know why? If scientists can bring down two tons, 2,000 kilograms of helium-3 from moon to India, one full years of India's energy generation can be done through two tons of helium-3 without any side effects of radioactivity. And moon, they have found helium-3. So, not only that we love moon, because from the ancient times, from the prehistoric times, people have imagined a lot of things that it is made up of seas, which are called marias, which now we know are plain lands. And there are fantastic names, sea of tranquility, sea of nectar, sea of understanding. Different names have been given. Even the craters that you see are being named as after famous scientists, Kepler, Einstein, Newton, each has a crater named after it. Why? just because of his tremendous importance to the earth, to us, to human life, and to our very first step in understanding how the cosmos works in a bigger scale. So that is the reason, apart from the beauty that we are seeing in front of us, it is of tremendous relevance and important, importance that it has come to Kolkata and the students, they can get excited. The young people, they can get motivated to know more about it. And the general people, out of their everyday existence, the struggle, they can find a moment to reconnect their mind, their perception with that of the cosmos. Because one thing I will tell you, looking up in the sky, why, why it is so romantic still today? Because in an instant, it expands your mind. Try this experiment tomorrow. Look up in the sky and try to think of a bad thing. You will see it will not come in your mind. The moment you think something negative, your neck suddenly starts paining and your eyes come down. Sky never allows you to be small. So each person, to not only to evolve himself, but to become a meaningful existence on this earth, should from time to time relate himself or herself with the sky. And moon is the closest object. So that is the reason there is a deep philosophical meaning behind this hanging orb of light that you get to see. And for tomorrow also you'll be able to see. And that is also personally, I profusely thank British Council and Victoria Memorial, both organization, to bring such an unique concept to Kolkata. Kolkata has been always open to ideas, sometimes wild, sometimes exciting, sometimes almost new. And I'm sure that this particular concept will not only be welcomed by each and every person of Kolkata, but also people will get interested into these sort of things. Because you should understand, there is only one way forward for us in the coming years, in the coming years, to evolve our mindset, and that is to become more scientifically tempered more analytic, more logical. Because we have seen lack of logic, lack of analysis has created so many turmoils in every society around the world. We do not talk to ourselves. We do not try to reason out with us and our friends. And science gives you that instance, that, 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 that moment where you understand, to understand the depth, to, under, to have a perception about it, we have to be analytical. And that is why science is needed. That is why a, a, an exhibition of this sort is needed. And that is why I, from the bottom of my heart and also from the general people of Kolkata, the young generation of Kolkata and the students of Kolkata, I wish to earnestly thank both British Council 
and the Victoria Memorial for doing a tremendously fantastic job of not only giving us an idea of the moon, but also to tell us to talk to ourselves for maybe a fraction of a second and think of our eternal existence in this whole concept of cosmos. So thank you very much also that you have come here today. Your presence gives the boost to all these organizations. And I like that 